But, you know, <laughs> um, let's just backtrack a little bit because when I was reading, I, I believe it was your intercessor handbook, um, and I think it's, uh, you know, if anyone doesn't have the book, it, it, actually all your books are very practical, which is what I really appreciate. But your background was a Mormon. And, yeah. Um, yeah, so, and you never heard of warfare. You know, a lot of people, even now, don't, they, they really dispute any kind of spiritual warfare. Yeah. But, um, you know, you have to, you know, I, I know that you've gone through it. I know I've gone through it. And that's really how I've learned had a war and it's it's not so much that my focus is on devils my focus is on the authority in, in God and what he's given us so God, why don't you give us a little background as to how you came out of the Mormon background into where you're at now yeah well um to I mean to give a fuller picture um I was always connected to the spiritual realm as long as I could remember. I, I remember things going back to age three where I was having experiences and, and different things were happening. So, so that was, you know, always open. Um, even as a Mormon, however, uh, even though they didn't talk about, you know, devils or anything like that, it's a very mystical religion. Uh, I, what I walked away from the Mormon church uh, still having was, it, was that there is the possibility of, of apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists, you know, because, uh, you know, or especially apostles and prophets. Okay, that's more, more accurate. And that there is a Holy Spirit. Um, but it was an inaccurate teaching. Okay, so but but it was, uh, you know, it, it, it ta they taught us uh, that there's a possibility of angels and messenger angels. And so once I came into Christianity, um, you know, a lot of that was shunned. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, I was taught wrong, but it's still in the Bible that you and I both both read. Um, I, I can't, came from a wrong teaching. I like to get the right teaching about this, you know, yeah. so I had a sense that, you know, it was real. Um, but through, you know, through that Mormonism, um, and it is an occultic system, you go uh, into the temple, you do rituals, you do rituals for the dead, and you just keep progressing, you know, into the, the rituals. They're not gross, they're not perverse, but it's a lot of mystical um, rituals for the afterlife and that kind of stuff. Um, so, and it's a cultic system and it impacts you. Um, I, despite what the Mormons believe, I was having uh, severe demonic attacks uh, the, my last two years of high school. Um, like devils, demons showing up, um, you know, beds shaking, you know, those kind of things. And so, you know, Mormon or not, I, I, I knew there were devils. I knew there were demons and I was having problems. And um, that really, once I became a Christian, gave my life to Jesus, uh, when I was a freshman in college, um, it was so real. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit within five minutes of giving my life to Christ. Had about a year of just peace, you know. And then I had to, that's when it all hit because, you know, when you have, you know, um, uh, what I call covenants or uh, sometimes I like to use the word contracts. People understand it a little better, but covenants with demons, which is essentially what happens when you engage in any sort of occultism, right. um, just like the natural, uh, even though you become a Christian, doesn't mean those things are broken. You have to actually break and nullify right. those agreements because um, those demons will come back and attempt to to take what they thought was theirs. And I went through that um, and I, I had to get very, very, I had to get delivered. Um, it was a really severe deliverance uh, from a spirit of sorcery. And, um, but I did. And, um, you know, so, so that kind of set the stage for, you know, <laughs> where the Lord was taking me. He's like, you know, you're going to learn to pray or you're going to die. You know, you're going to learn <laughs> authority true. or you're going to die. Yeah. If you want to make it, you've got to learn your spiritual authority. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I just kind of got thrown into the deep end of the pool and, um, you know, sink or swim, uh, figure it out. But in you know, the Holy Spirit, was just so good to teach me. Um, he was really good. Yeah, that was powerful. And I love and I love how practical you bring out even your deliverance, because, you know, a lot of people get frightened by that because uh, they think it's something, you know, really spooky. And it's not, uh, you know, I had to get delivered. He had to get delivered more than me. But he had to get delivered. <laughs> but well, uh, that so proves she course. still needs it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but I, my thing is, hey, listen, if Jesus came to set the captives free, then I'm going for it. Right. You know, I want yeah. freedom. And if I know there's something yeah. there, I want to deal with it. I'm not going to pretend it's not there. Right. Or, you know, sometimes right. you can you can say, you know, I've had people say, well, we're leaders. Well, I'm like, all oh, the more we need it. Okay. So we need to address these things, you know. So oh. um, so when you started to experience this stuff, then did you immediately know 
um, like where to go? Who, who did you connect with for deliverance or did the Lord just start teaching you? Well, um, the people that I manifested in front of, they supposedly were experts in spiritual warfare, but whatever I was dealing with, and I, a lot of things you get now that you didn't get then, they did not have, they didn't carry the authority right. to deliver me from what I was dealing with. Okay. So despite that, the Holy Spirit is still good. Yeah. And he taught me to walk in my own spiritual authority. I had to walk that thing out. Um, and as, you know, as a, as a new Christian, it was very scary. I felt alone. Um, my immediate family didn't get it at all. And for whatever reason, I was experiencing more stuff than others, not knowing I was heading into ministry, not knowing I, you just, you know, right. you didn't know, you know what it was yeah. all about. You don't know what the battles are all about. Um, but what I do know is that John chapter eight, verse 36 is that he, Jesus came to set, set us free Amen. and free indeed, you know? Thank and God. so he promises us total freedom. And that's from everything. And a lot of us, we kind of hold out that maybe the thing we're dealing with is too much for Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that, that there's, you know, you know, and you're, you're given all this medical, psychological, spiritual counsel to kind of reduce what Jesus paid the price mm -hmm. for. And he paid the price for all of it. Um, uh, sometimes we have to work it out. It's a process. It, you know, it's going to take some time. But he's promised us total freedom. Mm -hmm. And so I was banking on, you know, I will know the truth and the truth will make me free. I was Amen. banking on, uh, you know, whom the son says free is totally free. Um, you know, and, and it has, all of this has been a journey. I mean, you know, you have pockets of where the Holy Spirit will deal with stuff and set you free and you feel good for a while. We'll never have to deal anything again. And then you have another pocket of stuff come up and, you know, and that's okay. So I just learned to work with it. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's definitely a process, and that's the thing, that we keep uh, progressing in the Lord. And, and, the, and you know, I, like the way I look at it is if, if the Holy Spirit came and, and hit us with everything we had to deal with, it would be so overwhelming. Right. So as yeah. we grow and develop our walk in the Lord and develop our identity and who we are, mm -hmm. we're able to overcome and constantly overcome. And until Jesus comes home, it's not that he's constantly, you know, like we're navel steerers. It's just that, right. that and we're constantly addressing things. We have our reprieve, but, but he loves us so much that he wants us free. So he wants us free from bitterness and, and life happens and situations happens where we can get very offended or hurt. And so he gives us tools to yeah. get us to that place of freedom. And, and I, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the supernatural. I'm grateful that we can worship and pray in the spirit and take authority over things. These are tools that God has right. given us, you know, so that we can, we can walk in our authority. And, you know, we're in this season, uh, the, the era of pay, which is the era of the mouth, and our decrees are extremely right. powerful. And so yes. we're, we're in a situation now, there's a lot of turmoil, there's a lot of chaos going on from the COVID thing that where I feel there's just a pandemic of fear that's been released, as, yeah. as we all know. And then you have all the chaos and the, the Antifa and the, you know, just the rioting and the, it, you know, everything that's happening, it's very disturbing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was uh, up past couple nights as an intercessor, you know, you feel everything and yeah. everything's yeah. going on, you know, and. And, and, I, and the Lord said to me, do you trust me? And I mm -hmm. said, yeah, I do, but you keep asking me this. <laughs> you know, I said, I, I do trust <laughs> you. I said, but, but you know, I, he said, keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes fixed exactly. on me. Because yes. there's the false prophets of the media, not everybody, but a lot of what's That's out there, it, it's, it's to set you up and to cause you to, to be in inner turmoil. And, that, so, mm -hmm. and the enemy is after our faith. Right. right. So if we're right. in that place of fear, if we're in that place of total turmoil, not hearing from the Lord, not in his peace, then we're, when we're decreeing that thing, we're not walking in that authority in the way we should. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know you've written a lot of books on that, and I'd love to hear your point on that, because we are powerful people. God's right. children. We have every single one of us. It's not like any, meeny, miny, mo. We all have it. And so, you know, what, how would you comment? I know you do a lot of online schools and, um, you know, you teach a lot on, on, on prayer and intercession, prophetic intercession and deliverance. So I'd like to hear right. what you would say about that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, you know, first off, when we when the COVID hit, it hit, it hit like um, things started shutting down a week after my last institute. So our institute was spared. It was inner healing and deliverance. Mm -hmm. And so that whole entire institute was spared the shutdown. I was just so, 
Um, and we stepped into it. And then um, what happened was, you know, I, I immediately had a dream, like, you know, prophetic intercessors do, we have a dream. And I'm in this international airport and I'm with another um, uh, prophetic intercessor. And I'm in an international airport and doing what, what symbolically we understand. I was taking trash and putting it in the trash can. And, you know, we mm -hmm. get that symbolically. It's pretty simple. And then I run into this, um, this Asian man. And he was very thin and very weak. And he had a mask on. And I discerned by the Holy Spirit that that was the COVID demon. Mm. And, um, uh, you know, he told me what country is going to hit next and, and everything. You know, it was all laughing and mocking. And so I came out of that dream very perplexed. I said, I said, Lord, I said, why, um, how does that, that weak thing, how does it uh, impact the nations the way it's been impacting? And the Lord didn't answer the question directly, but he did answer me this. He said, as suddenly as this came, it will suddenly end. And so I've been telling people, you know, we need to call for the sudden end. Um, you know, some people try, try to kind of twist my words a little bit and say that I said it was going to be a quick end. I didn't say that. I said sudden end because that's what the Lord said. He said sudden end. So it is going to end. That that I know, you know, and I think you know it too, really. If you search your heart, you know, right. this is going to end. Right. Okay. But I think what we forget is that, you know, everything we have comes from the Lord. And that's from Hosea. Um, chapter two, you know, says, um, I think it's verse eight. She says she doesn't realize it was I who gave her everything right. she has. Okay. She doesn't realize that it's I who gave her everything she, she has. No, he's referring to Israel and everything right. you now symbolically, but we can take that for ourselves because it's the truth. Everything we have comes from the Lord. So if we don't have something right now, guess who's the one who gives it to us, who grants it to us, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> who's the freedom giver, you know? And that's just, we got to move from the personal to the corporate now, right, right. okay? You know, yeah, it is it is personal, but now we, as a church, we have to move to the corporate, which means, you know, I actually, you know, and we, we have our prayer, time. we kept our prayer times through the whole shutdown, just to me for us to shut that off. We just didn't make it public, you know? Right. And we would come together and come together corporately and we would begin to pray, even, even things like this. We would pray, we would pray for church to open. We would pray for schools to open. We would pray that we'd be able to get our, our businesses open. I mean, we, we started going to the Lord about every mm -hmm. little teeny thing. And I would say most of it is happening. There's some things I'm like, man, didn't happen. I don't know why. But, it, but you know, um, a lot of things, you know, just little by little. And then I, we were like, okay, thank you that this opened this much, right. <laughs> you know, and just trying to really come back to the Lord and say, you're the one uh, who bursts us out of our confinements. Chap uh, Micah chapter two, verse 13 message right. version. You right. burst us out of our confinements. Right. You lead us into the opens, but we got to keep our eyes on the King. And so that's really been the challenge. I can't say I've, I've succeeded in that every single day of this. Right. I haven't, but I would say for the most part, myself and, and those that, you know, we gather together in intercession, we've made it a point to go to the Lord for every little thing that has been denied us. Right. And so um, it really challenges the control that we thought we had. Right. It challenges, our, it challenges right. a lot right. because, yeah. I, you know, you, you feel out of control. Right. I'm not in control. And I want to control this. And so I say things and sure. I... I get on the side of the enemy and I get strifeful and I, I, I act out on the, the worker at the business that won't let me in because I didn't wear a mask, you know, things like that. Right. Um, you know, and, and so I want to encourage people, let's, let's go back to the Lord, go back yes. to him.